If you want to cut acrylic, you need a CO2 laser like the X-Tool P2. In this video, we are going to make a clear acrylic menu board that involves both cutting and engraving. And if you have an X-Tool, the Creative Space file is down in the description. You can grab that and go make your own or follow along and I'm going to walk you through how to create one. Let's dive in. A CO2 laser is ideal for working with every kind of acrylic. If you want to learn more about the basics of how a machine like this works, take a look at my introduction to the P2 video. So today we are making a clear acrylic menu board. I am using this for my refrigerator because right now I just use a piece of scratch paper and I want something a little more permanent that I can plan out my meals every week. I am using clear acrylic so that it will go up on my refrigerator and I can use any kind of dry erase marker on it. So here are the supplies you need for this project. We're gonna use a three millimeter clear acrylic. You're also going to need a white paint pen. This is also acrylic paint. You're gonna need a couple of magnets. Make sure your magnets are strong enough to hold the piece of acrylic that you're using. I tried a couple test runs on these and smaller magnets did not hold it up. You're gonna need some adhesive. And then either Gorilla Tape or a tool to pull the masking off the acrylic once we're all done. So the first thing we're gonna do is go over to Xtool Creative Space and we're gonna start designing this project. If you wanna learn how to make your own designs just using Creative Space and no other software, you're gonna get a lot out of this part. If you just wanna make this project, you can go down in the description and grab the Design Space file, upload it into your software and go ahead and make it. We are using XCS 2.0. Uh, it is May of 2024, and this is just coming out of beta, so it's a great time to get to know this version of the software so you can use it for yourself. In Xtool Creative Space, we're going to go and open a new project. First thing I want to do is connect my machine or make sure it's connected. That button is right up here on the top and you can connect multiple machines. So if you have more than one X tool, you can connect it right here and add it. Um, right now, my P2 is on and I have already connected it via Wi-Fi. So XCS is gonna automatically recognize that. So we are connected to the P2. And the camera took a picture of the base. Now I find it easier to work when I have just a white background and not the camera showing. Uh, just for my eyes, it makes it a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and hide the background until I'm ready to take that photo. Now, my piece of acrylic I'm using is 12 by 12. And the way that my refrigerator works, I want my menu board to actually be just a little bit smaller than that. So I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle. And I'm going to make it about 10 by 10. And over here on the right is where you can adjust uh, the size and the shape of everything. I hit this unlink button so that I could have a 10 by 10 piece. And now I'm going to link them back together so that uh, when I move it, it'll keep the aspect ratio. This button right here, so this is a rotate button where my cursor is, the one to the right is going to help me make corners. So if I hit 0.5, I am going to get just a little bit of rounding on the corners. The acrylic can be a little sharp and I don't necessarily want um, sharp corners on this. I want just nice, a nice soft piece. So now I'm gonna start adding some words. So we can hit the text button and just go ahead and type out what I want. And then a little bit further down here are some options for text. So there are Xtool texts that are in here, but you're also going to find all, if you keep scrolling down, you're going to find any fonts that are installed on your computer are going to show up in XCS. Uh, so if you purchase a font and you install it, it's going to show up here. But to keep it simple, we're going to go ahead and just use XCS fonts. And right now we are just playing with shapes and words. I am not uh, setting any parameters for engraving or cutting yet. We're just playing around with placement. 
So this is going to say menu on the top, and then each day of the week is going to be listed down on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and add Monday through Sunday on the side there. So once I have it looking how I want, I can just duplicate that and then go ahead and add the next letter, duplicate that, go ahead and add the next letter. All right, so now that I have all my letters, I want to evenly space them apart. So I'm gonna roughly put them in the place where I want them. And then I'm gonna use some of the built-in tools to space these apart. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm actually gonna move this box over and then I can drag my mouse over all of them. So all of my letters are selected. And I'm gonna come over here on the right. So I want to distribute these vertically. And that's gonna make sure they're all spaced apart vertically. And then this button right here, this align button, I want to actually align them all centered. So now if I click off of that, I have some perfectly spaced letters going all the way up and down. I can bring this back. I think I wanna make my menu a little bit smaller here. And now I wanna add some lines on here so that uh, I have some separation between each day of the week. Then I can just take that line and duplicate it. One of the things I like about XCS is when I'm pulling this down, you see these little grid lines pop up. This is helping me snap these lines into place so that they are aligning with other objects on the page. It's a really nice feature that most design softwares have. And so it is so cool to see it in XCS. It allows me to truly de design things right here in the software and not have to do them elsewhere. So now I'm gonna pull this box away again and I'm gonna select all those lines and then I'm going to use the tools over on the right to align them. So in this case I want to line everything up on the left so all my lines are pulled over that way and then I'm going to distribute them vertically and see how that looks. That looks like everything should be good. I've got some nice space where it says Monday to then use a dry erase marker and just write out my meal for Monday all the way down through Sunday. The one thing you want to keep in mind is this is clear acrylic and we are putting magnets on the back of that. So the magnets are going to show through. So there are going to be big round circles up in each corner and they're going to show through um, behind kind of the engraving. And I don't like the way they look behind the engraving. So I want to make sure I make room for that. So in order to do that, I'm going to change the shape of my box a little bit. I'm actually going to make it a little bit taller not quite the full 12 inches. That way, I know that I've got space to put the magnets in the corners without them overlapping the engraving that I'm doing. So now we need to tell our P2 what kind of material we're working with and what to do with these elements we just created. So the first thing I'm gonna do is click off all of the elements. Then I'm gonna go over here to the right and I'm gonna start setting some parameters here. So I am processing on the slats. I am not using anything special within my P2. Now I'm gonna pick the material. So you can pick from one of the ones here. If you don't see what you're looking for, you wanna go to the Easy Set Library. I'm gonna show you this. This is new in XCS 2.0 and it's pretty impressive. So I can go ahead and type what I'm using. And it's going to show me all the different types of a transparent acrylic that come up. And if I hover over them, it's going to tell me like this is the three millimeter acrylic. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And I can set on here what I want it to do. Do I want it to cut, score, or engrave? And if I want to change my power settings, I can go ahead and do that here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the acrylic in the machine. Once the acrylic is in the machine, we can go ahead and measure the thickness. All right, so we are auto measured. Now I wanna tell the P2 what to do with this design here. I'm gonna first pull this box away because it's just a little bit easy to work with. Now I want to select all of the text. So if I hold down the shift key, I can just go ahead and select all of the text. I'm going to engrave these. 
So scroll all the way down and we are going to hit combine. This is going to take all the elements and make them into one image. Just makes processing a little bit more efficient and it can make it faster. So I'm going to set this to engrave. And then over on the easy set panel here, I can adjust the settings. So I know that a power of 15% and a speed of 200 is ideal for engraving on clear acrylic for me. Now to set the cut settings for the box. Whenever you're setting cut settings, start on the very top of this right panel and make sure this output box is checked, that it is green. This tells the machine that you want to make this function operate. If that is turned off, nothing will happen. So if you ever run a job and something doesn't happen, check that the output thing is checked. So we're gonna set this to cut. We already have that user defined material set for transparent acrylic. Just gonna double check that the power is at 80, the speed is at 20, and it's one pass. If I wanna change this, I can do so in the easy set panel. But these are really good settings for me. I have found that I don't really ever need to go to 100, to 100%. I usually keep it around 80. It's gonna cut nice and clean. Finally, I'll select each of the lines and I'm gonna set those to score and I'm gonna use the default settings for scoring. We don't need to deeply engrave those. We just want them to lightly show up. Now I can highlight everything and move it over to my piece of acrylic. So the entire thing is sitting on my acrylic. The P2 comes with two cameras. So this is my wide view that I'm just gonna kind of generally make sure it's placed. Then I can go up and click on close shot. I like to pull it up in the corner here and it is gonna go ahead and take a close shot of that. So I can make sure that the cut lines are actually where they need to be. And so this is telling me that I'm gonna be okay. You can right click and delete the close view. Now what this is telling me actually, I can't quite see the top of my acrylic. I'm gonna go over to my machine and I am gonna scooch that down just a little bit to fill in the bottom here. I am happy with where everything is placed. It is time to process. This screen is new in XES 2.0. It shows the estimated time and a preview of the laser trajectory, so you can see the order of operations for your project. You can even preview the full job before proceeding. So I'm happy with this, and now I can hit start. As a safety measure, I need to then hit the button on the P2 to begin the job. Pulling this out of the machine here, I have to say this is actually a really clean cut. However, the masking on the back is just sticking a little bit. So I'm gonna go through with a craft knife and just slice that off. So leave the masking on. We don't wanna take any of that off. I am just gonna take a baby wipe here and clean up a little bit just in case there is any residue from where the acrylic engraved. I don't wanna wipe so hard that I rub away any of the masking on here, but I do just wanna clean out inside of here. You could also use a paintbrush to just kind of wipe away any excess that's in there. But once you do it a little bit and then your wipe is clean, you know that you've cleaned it all the way. Now, anytime you want to fill your engraved letters, you want to do it while your masking is on. It's just going to give you a really clean finish. And I am going to fill mine with just an acrylic paint marker. I have these in a set with a bunch of different colors. They work on opaque acrylic and clear. You can find a link down in the description. You just shake them up. They're filled with paint. And it comes out here. So we leave the masking on so that when I fill in here, I'm gonna get nice clean edges. You don't wanna use so much paint that it's gonna go under the masking, but it's okay if you get a little bit on there. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a second coat to darken up some of these letters. Now that everything's dry, it's time to take the masking off. So you can just pull at a corner or use a tool like this to kind of peel it off, but you run the risk of scratching your acrylic. So I highly recommend getting a big roll of Gorilla Tape. This stuff is incredibly sticky. You only need a little bit. We're gonna cut off a piece and I'm just gonna start in the corner and watch how easy this pulls up. It's just to get it started. I can also reuse it if I've got a piece that's ripping in the corner and I need to pull that up. 
Then if I go slowly, these little intricate pieces should just pull away on their own. I'll leave the back masking on for just a second, and we're going to look at all of our letters here. So it looks like for the most part, they're pretty crisp, but in some places that paint has bled through. You can grab a baby wipe again, and because this is engraved, you can take the baby wipe and go right over the top. And it's just going to clear away the paint from the raised surface, not the in engraved surface. Don't push too hard. Make sure your baby wipe isn't too wet and it should clean up your edges for you. You could also use a Q-tip with just water because it's acrylic paint. It's water-based. It will come off really easily. And as always, if you're really careful, you can take your paint marker and go through and add any more if you need to. So let's flip it over and get this masking off the back. It's kind of already torn up here from cutting, so I should be able to just pull this right off. Let's talk about these magnets for a second here. These are not adhesive magnets, they're just magnets. So there's a couple ways you could attach these to the acrylic. One is with super glue. The other is with this tape right here. This is a double-sided 3M tape, and it is ideal for attaching acrylic to acrylic. It also works really well for attaching magnets to acrylic. You can actually put this on to the back side of your acrylic before you cut it, and then you pull this tape off and it has adhesive if you're sticking two pieces together. So this tape is really good to have in your laser cutting arsenal. What we're gonna do for the magnets is just stick them to the tape. And then when this is secured really well on the back, we can just go ahead and cut the excess off. And so they should look like that on the back. Whenever you're working with really, whenever you're working with clear acrylic, you want to make sure that the adhesive you use uh, dries clear because you're going to see it. So I've just got this on a piece of cardboard here just so we can see it a little bit better. So this is what our magnets look like. And right now I'm just gonna kind of place them where I want them, make sure they're lined up perfectly before we take that adhesive off because it is very sticky. And then we can just go ahead and peel the backing off. Make sure you line it up exactly where you want it because again, this is a really strong adhesive. So let's go get this on the fridge and see how it looks. I hope you found this video helpful and you learned something and you're ready to go make your own clear acrylic projects. If you have any further questions about this project or the P2, drop them down in the comments. I would love to chat with you. And if you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I am here every week with brand new videos to help you move forward in your creative journey. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.